This is my Ichthyosaur Brittany that I found in 2004, wasn't it, I think. Hang on. I'll look on. No, 2003. Let's see if your memory's correct. 2003, yeah, yeah you're right. 2003. Yeah. And I started off, I just found, I was walking along with a friend, and I just saw one vertebra sticking out of the hard bedrock. And I said, oh, I found a vertebra. So I started chipping away. And I said, oh, I found another vertebra. And then I carried on chipping. And I think, oh, there's a whole um, row of vertebra. I thought, well, I want a row of vertebra. And I was getting quite excited. Because um, I'd gone all the way up, I'd gone about a foot up of row of vertebra. And then Steve came along and said, oh dear. Because uh, I realised at that point I'd got an articulated skeleton. And Steve very kindly showed me more of how to do it properly. But you have to start off by digging a trench in the rock. First, well, first assess how the sort of diameter of it, how wide it is, how much ground it covers, and then dig a trench with chisels in the rock outside of that, and then gradually bring it out in slabs. And it took me, I think it was eight solid days, and I did first, most of the days on my own, just carrying these huge, great slabs, um, on my back in my rucksack. At first it seemed impossible to do. Then I found I could just get them in my rucksack and I could just stand up. And then I thought, oh, I can actually walk. And I found I could walk about a hundred yards and I'd have to lean against something. And gradually you repeat that process for about two miles along beneath the cliffs of Kimmeridge. And then bit by bit it came home and then Steve wasn't quite sure when I first found it whether it was I was heading towards the tail or whether I was heading towards the skull and you suspected it was the tail and as I progressed I suddenly realized it was going towards the skull and for the final uh, I think it was three days I had a friend Martin came along and he bought a inflatable dinghy with him so if we were able to get it out, <coughs> we'd be able to float it back um, along back to the Kimmeridge jetty. And then Steve and Tony Holmes very kindly came along to help for the final section on the Saturday, I think it was. And we all worked very hard digging the big trench around the skull mm. section. And that was on the Saturday, but we didn't get it out and right. on that day. And then Martin and I came back on the Sunday and we carried on digging the trench. And at a certain point, I thought we're not going to get it. The whole thing's going to fall apart. And then suddenly you get what you get. You suddenly just get that. You see a, almost a vibration when you hit it. And you know it's, it's the tension's been broken and it's come free. And so we managed to get this whole huge... Um, skull lump. section, great lump <laughs> of cranium. You couldn't see much of it, but it's all within this huge lump of rock. We managed to get it loose. And then the snout was going down into the rock and quite deep. And we managed in sections to get it out in about four sections. And then we got the whole thing into the boat and managed to get it back to Kimmeridge and I took it back to my cottage in Hampshire where I was living. And as it had um, presented itself, it was ventrally presented, so it was its belly side up. And I figured that when it died, it had floated to the surface and the gases in its belly had sort of kept it belly up at the surface floating. And when the gas is dissipated, it took a, a sort of nose dive down to the bottom of the sea because the very tip of the nose was bent where it appeared to, to hit the seabed. And then it settled in, so it belly up. And then there was a bit of scavenging 
probably took place, wouldn't you say? And yeah. it, there's a sort of kink in the vertebra, isn't there? Yeah. And then it gradually covered with silt. And then 153 million years later, we discovered it. And so I did my best to prepare it from, eventually, from its um, bottom up side. And I had it in my cottage in Hampshire, and then again, where I was living in Dorset for quite a few years. And then I had to move house into a much smaller house. And a friend of mine, Martin, agreed to have it. He lived out in Kent. And, but then um, he was going to move, so he uh, kindly brought it down in a van for Steve. And I gifted it to the Etches collection. And Steve, you worked for about eight months on it, mm, didn't doing you? It out. Yeah. Preparing it from the dorsal yeah. side. Yeah. And you revealed the whole of its um, cranium. Yeah. And yeah, all of that. Yeah. All of Thinned that. Thinned it right down. We fiberglassed the top side that you discovered, where you prepped. We fiberglassed all that and then turned it upside down, removed all the rock, and then you got it in a, a manageable sort of sections. But the interesting thing is, you forgot to say, is the fact that when in the offing years ago you said, look, if you ever get your museum, I'll give you it on a permanent loan yeah. basis. Do you remember? Yeah. And then when it came to, you said, well, I'll let you have it on a permanent loan basis. I said, well, the only thing with that, Philip, permanent means revenue, and loan doesn't. So which one is it? <laughs> and um, he said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, look, I've donated all my material to the, the trust. And really, it now it belongs to the nation. And you very kindly, without any hesitation, said, well, if you've done that, I'll do the same with this. And some of the other materials well, that you found, a lot of it. So you donated all of it, which you could have sold or done something with it, but basically it's in a, in a museum now where, near where it was found, and hopefully for the future, and people can actually come down and see it. And what you've got here, what it represents, is the largest, most complete Kimmeridge and Ichthyosaur found to date. And not only that, in the collection, we've got two other Ichthyosaurs. So we hold the largest collection of Kimmeridge and... Um, highly significant ichthyosaur material held anywhere, which even the Natural History Museum can't match. So it's a very generous donation, and um, hopefully it's going to be here for the foreseeable future, curated and kept in the environment it should be kept in, for people to actually see. If you donated it in the Natural History Museum, I can assure you no one would see it except for researchers. It would probably still be in its respective parts, and... But here, it's in its full glory for people to appreciate and look at. Which you like coming to see it, anyway. I love coming to see it. And lots of my friends like coming yeah, to exactly. see it. Yeah, exactly. And it's still your find, you know. That's, yeah. It's quite funny because before... Um, don't forget, you were at Cambridge sort of seven days a week and I had to work for them. But I did find, I, just to sort of get a little bit of credit, I found one small neural arch of this. Yeah about a couple of weeks, but then Kimmeries, they the shale ledges sort of wear off quite quickly or something comes up and I, I never saw any of it. And then all of a sudden, a week later, Philip comes along and, and finds just the back of those. Now there's three loose vertebrae. Were they scattered then? Um, I so think they were, when I was, yeah, they were scattered. When I was yeah. taking it out, there were some, those ones were too far away from the main skeleton. Yeah, okay. But, the interesting thing is, again, we've got a, a reasonably, nearly complete front flipper. No, no other one. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we've not got the limbs, the, the rear limbs either. So, yeah. And there's a, probably two or three metres more to go on there. So it's really... But what it, what it represents is something fantastic. We are hoping, against hope, and not with this one, we did find anything, was any stomach contents. Because when we turn these things upside down, naturally... Yeah that gets preserved yeah. more often than not. But unfortunately, with this one, no. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a really intriguing, interesting story. And um, again, it's the most... Uh, people are always gobsmacked by this. So I'll start my talks talking about this one and what it represents. Um, as I say, extremely rare find. Great. Thank you very much. No, thank you.
That's all we've got for you today from the Etches Collection. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more, and hopefully we'll see you next time.